teammate of mine that I've been on the record both on this show today and in the past saying one of the greatest teammates of all time. Absolute superstar who never forgot that you can be humble and relatable to everybody on the roster. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer out of Syracuse University, Dwight Freeney. Yeah! Hey, Dwight. Hey, sorry about the rumor mill. Sorry about the rumor mill there. I think you just caught the tail end of it. A lot going on, Dwight. Hey, absolutely hilarious. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, that's good journalism. Oh, dying. That's good journalism. Hey, listen, man. Don Don, we love him. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we certainly do, Dwight. Where are you at? You golfing right now? I know you're a big time golfer, obviously. Man, listen, I just got off the course. Listen, I probably set the course record for balls in the water on 18. Okay. It was absolutely terrible. I was donating balls left and right. Like I was, I don't know, giving to the Salvation Army. I was like, here, you get a ball. You get a ball. It was terrible. <laughs> very it nice. Terrible. Very nice of you to do that. Some scuba golfer will get in there and dig all those up. So we had a good round going into 18, yeah. then it was ruined? Absolutely not. I don't even know why I even showed up that day. Okay. <laughs> quite honest with you. It's one of those days. Now, listen, if I was a professional, I'd be out there being professional, right? Yeah. I'm an amateur. I'm a hack. And this is what I do. Good day, bad day. Yeah, this is what it is. You play a lot, though. I mean, hey, Franey, you're out there a lot, aren't you? We should be getting good at some point, right? You would think. Okay. You would think. Okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's talk about the thing that you're great at, not just uh, getting good at. Whenever I watched you play football, and I think this is everybody's experiencing you for the first time. It was like a very natural reaction to be like so explosive, so powerful, and seemingly playing chess against the person that he's battling against the whole time. You also looked out for everybody else on the team, including the rest of the D-line, obviously. When you get your name called and you finally find out that you're going into the Hall of Fame, was there any feelings? Was this something that you knew was coming inevitably? Did you get overwhelmed with emotion? What were your thoughts when you found out that you finally made it in after being told to wait a little bit? And uh, everybody that's ever played alongside you or watched you play football knew this day was coming, so congratulations. Man, I appreciate it. You know, Pat, no matter how you try to prepare yourself emotionally, no matter how you think it's going to go, nothing compares to when you actually hear someone tell you that you're going to be in a football hall of fame, you know, and obviously, you know, being a finalist the year prior, I knew I was going to be in the conversation at some point, but you know, you got guys like Jared Allen who deserves to be in and is still waiting, you know, Reggie Wayne still waiting. So you don't really know, you know, I just knew this year, you know, after last year, I was going to put the blinders on. I was like, look, I only like to worry about things I can control for the most part, but this one is a hard one not to be so connected to. So I think I did a pretty good job, you know, and I was really surprised when the door opened and I saw coach Dungy sitting right there, and telling me, you know, look, Dwight, you're in the Hall of Fame. It was absolutely amazing. There's certain times in your life where time kind of stands still. And I would say that moment for me, you know, like you can hear a pin drop. It was one memory that I'll never forget. It was a beautiful video to watch too. It was shared on social. And uh, Tony Dungy being the guy to inform you is a beautiful thing, I could imagine. And I like the fact you said, I'm going to put my blinders on. I'm going to go shoot 110 on a golf course every single day. I'm not even going to think. 111. 111. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. Go ahead, AJ. Dwight, I I'm curious about like your your – progression from when you got in the league until the end like when you came into the NFL were you already like a student of the game and a student of pass rushing and and how a team might try to block you and everything I know at least at, you know later on in your career you absolutely seem like a scientist how you would dissect offenses and blocking schemes and what you wanted to do was that something you learned along the way or do you come in with that well I mean look when you're young you're dumb it just is what it is it's just part of, part of the you know recipe you know you you always want to match up, you know, your experience and your knowledge with your speed and explosiveness or whatever. And it never really matches up until later, you know. So when I first got in, I was just fast running around the corner. It didn't know much. But, you know, I was very blessed to have a great coach named John Turling. John Turling, I think, is a Hall of Fame. He has rest in peace. Hall of Fame defensive line coach. Coached a lot of greats. 
And uh, he sat me down, taught me the right way to kind of study the game. And um, that's, you know, what helped me, you know, my first, second year, I was learning from him who he's been a player and a coach for so many years. So he kind of caught me up to speed pretty quickly on, you know, how you should look at it, how, you know, from a protection standpoint, how this tackle is setting, what do you need to do? So if it wasn't for JT, um, I know I wouldn't be where I am today. Hell yeah, JT. Rest in peace, dude. You did good. And to his family yeah, that's absolutely. either listening or watching, what a legend. That, and they knew that. Uh, JT was the one that told me that in preseason games, I need to <laughs> Obviously, that's getting <laughs> muted on ESPN, but on YouTube, ESPN Plus, oh, that goodness. was a real deal. I got blindsided. Uh, we were punting yeah. against somebody in the preseason. I punted the ball. Big return came. Guy looping around, shoulder right into my chest, Ooh. like right into my chest. And I have that whole mm -hmm. thing happen. Yeah. So like, I hit the ground a little bit, and then I come walking off the field, still can't breathe. I sit down on the defensive side of the bench, you know, because that's open then because the defense on the field. We just gave up horrible field position. And JT comes over, big dude, monster of a man, huge man. <laughs> he comes over. This is the first time, like, he has talked to me, and he sits down next to me. And he gives me the kid treatment, you know? He said, because they're going to score right now. And nobody cares. Guess who cares? Nobody cares. Okay? So you punt the ball, and you get off the field. And if you don't, we will have problems. Okay? And I was like, you got, you know, like losing my breath. And then he patted me on my leg so hard. And then he used my leg to get up. He used my leg to get up. And then he walked away. And it was like, from that moment forward, I felt like we were friends almost. And then you have a couple like beers with the guy. He was like the greatest, the greatest. And I don't think anybody ever really talks about him much, D. I, I really don't the, think that is the case. I, absolutely not. The, the question I have for you is, did you get treatment on your leg after <laughs> JT put his weight hey, Franny, on, on your leg? Franny, I did have a bruise I, from, from <laughs> the middle of the quad all the way down to the knee. But yeah, yeah couldn't do it. Yeah, he was a legend. That team you guys had was so I got to catch the tail end of it obviously just the chemistry and the group of people was so magical and obviously you're one of the leaders always have been Tone's got one of the questions for you yeah Dwight have you talked to uh, Jim Irsay yet about your Hall of Fame gift because I'm not sure if you know he bought Edron James a phantom which I believe is the price tag on that is is not it's not cheap so I don't know if, if it's the same deal and for he also all... left what money in yeah, the yeah, club, club, club. club I don't know if it's the same deal for all Colts that go into the Hall have you talked to Jim about that yet I need to talk to him. Okay. I need to talk to him. You know, Jim, you know, Jim loves us. Mm -hmm. You know, he loves that's one thing I would say about Jim is he loves us to death. We love him. He would do anything, anything for us. Agreed. So that might be a conversation I need to have. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. He, he absolutely should. Especially now. You know, I probably love hearing from you. But then also he'd be like, oh free, I got this. I got this nine hundred thousand dollar car on back order right now. <laughs> yeah. it's supposed to be coming to your golf course. Yeah, but put it down by the eighteenth hole. A little, uh, yeah. little prize for whenever you shoot a fifteen on eighteen. <laughs> Ty's got a question for you, Dwight. Yeah, Dwight, with your skill set, obviously that would have translated to any time in the NFL. But do you think it would have been more difficult to have the kind of career you had with today's rules? Now we're we're seeing guys who they get a clean hit on the quarterback and it's roughing. And, you know, all these different ways that they're kind of trying to diminish how the defense plays. Like, do you ever kind of look back and say, like, oh, thank God I played in the era I did and I'm not playing right now? Yeah, absolutely. Every game I sit there and say, I retired at the perfect time. <laughs> it's, for me, look, when you get around that offensive tackle, you know, and I, I really implore the NFL to have more guys that play defensive line in those meetings. So those they can really understand how hard it really is when you're when you're a guy, especially like my size, right? I'm an undersized defensive end. I have to go 100 percent, 100 miles per hour around the offensive tackle. All right, now that offensive tackle is not trying to let me just hit their quarterback. He's 350 pounds and pissed off. Uh -huh. So I'm rounding around the corner. Uh -huh. He, I have to can beat him my momentum is going to just take me wherever it's going to take me. And hopefully the quarterback is sitting right there so I can run right over him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, he, and, and that's just what it is. You know, that is how you play the game of football. So I understand what the NFL is trying to do. They try to, you know, preserve and hey, be careful. Don't hurt the quarterback and all of that. But this is a violent game. 
and always will and be. Sometimes and always will be. Sometimes, hey, if the quarterback's there and he's there, hey, and if they're going to call it, they're going to call it. If they're not going to call it, they're not going to call it. Just, that is just kind of how the game is turning out to be now, and it's based on the refs. If the refs maybe having a good day. Hey, maybe he lets you go with a couple of times you hit him a little bit too hard. But if he's having a bad day, you have no chance. AJ, I saw a couple of hip drop tackles in there. I don't know about yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I did see too. Those hip drop tackles, kick him out of the game, bit. Doug. What do you think of those, Dwight? What do you think about the hip drop tackle situation? I, I can't even understand it. I, I honestly, I can't <laughs> even understand it. I don't get it. We, how are we supposed to get guys down? Like you got to figure out a way to make it even across the board, Oof. offense and defense. Jeez. I get it. Protect offensive players. People get hurt, but it is what it is. You can't stop it. It's inevitable. People are going to get hurt. It is what it is. Hey, I think they were trying to ban that spin move there for a bit. Mm-hmm. Hey, yep. why was it so effective? You think you were just faster than everybody? You think that what it was? Well, I think for me, you know, is everything was predicated on speed, Pat. So, you know, with the fear of speed on the outside, the offensive tackle had to get his feet moving to stop it. All right? and, and I think you kind of alluded to it in the beginning. It, it's not playing checkers. It's kind of chess. So, you know, I know he's he can't stop everything. So if I'm running around the corner 100 miles per hour and he's, he's blocking me, good for him. He's blocking me. But that also means he's committing to the outside speed and I can pull the spin move. And then he starts to sit on the spin, then I go back outside. And then we... Bullrush. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> then whenever he, he doesn't know what's coming, we bull rush him. Zito just looked this up. He told me, uh, coming out of Syracuse, you were 255, ran a 439. Is that real? 268. Okay, I was 268 coming out of college. And I ran, you won't even believe me. What? I ran a 438 at Syracuse and they had to prorate it a tenth because I did not run it at the combine. So they had to add uh, to it. So it became four four eight. But hey, I ain't complaining. You know four three eight? It is, it you is. were a four three eight at two sixty eight? I ran I ran four three eight at Syracuse. And because I didn't run into combine, they had to add. What the hell does that mean? What, how do you even? You still can move a little bit. We can still move a little bit. You think? Oh, yeah. I, I I can't move anything but the golf ball in the wrong direction. Okay, that's, <laughs> all, right. that's all I got. Hey, you're maybe one of the <laughs> most. Ex- hey, you're maybe one of the most explosive people that have ever existed. Four three eight at two sixty eight. That's absurd. I didn't even unheard of. Hey, good for you, dude. Good. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Yeah. That's Hall of Famer. Connor's got a question about another one of those. Yeah, Dwight, for the first time in like half a century, Bill Belichick won't be coaching in the NFL. Do you have any thoughts around that? Because mm-hmm. obviously Pat has mentioned before, like the chip block was basically invented by Bill Belichick to try and stop you. Do you think the game will, you know, pass over him? Or do you think probably, you know, next year, next cycle, Bill's coming back to the NFL? Well, you know, Speaking on the chip, he kind of created the off, the tight end off the ball chip. You know, the receiver, who, what is he even doing in, in the pass protection, you know, type of deal. But <laughs> I think Bill is a I think Bill is a genius, man. I think Bill is one of the greatest coaches that ever coached the game. He, he you know, relates to the players, you know, from a football perspective. It's hard to keep a guy like him out of the game because he knows so much. Um, I think the only thing that will stop Bill is when Bill decides, you know what, I'm done. Somebody's going to pick Bill up. Somebody's going to, you know, every year you have four or five teams that fire their head coach every single year. Oh, yeah. All right. And this year is not going to be any different. And Bill's going to be sitting right there and he's going to get the pick of whatever he wants to, wherever he wants to go. All right. But it's, you know, it is what it is. He is, he's, he's getting older. We all know he's in his 70s. Oh. And I think, you know, you hear, hey, you know, is he relatable to the players? But, man, listen, this man has how many rings? Seven? Who knows? Eight? Whatever he has, <laughs> you know, there's a reason for that because he knows what he's doing. All right? And the years that he – the last three or four years, they didn't win because they really didn't have the talent. Wow. And that's just what it is. Well, the quarterback was rapping the whole time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just learned. That's right. So I learned. <laughs> ah, Freddie, yeah. enjoy the hell out of your life, man. You've earned everything that you got, legitimately. And whenever I talk about you being like one of the most humble teammates of all time, 
You're, you weren't supposed to be like that. You're a superstar. You're 268 running 438. Exactly. You're a cool dude, man. You're one of one. Congrats. All right, pal. I love you, man. Y'all take care. How's, All right? how's Cornhole? You getting any better at that? Man, listen, whenever you're ready. Right. I hadn't played it since, but you know me. <laughs> Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Dwight Freeney. Thank you, buddy. Hey, boy. He was, you know me? He was a, he was a horrendous Cornhole player. Uh, oh, no. Really? Yeah. Not oh. good. But. He did have an eye for talent. <laughs> mm. I was a pretty good cornhole player. So I'd get a, how we feeling today on the boards? Pretty good. All right, we're going 1,000 M&Ms against blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah per point. <clears throat> yep. Got it. Sure. Let's go do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's, yeah. Go, let's go do that. It was awesome.